We're gonna apply the quotient rule here. Top one is F, bottom one is G. We wanna put this into the quotient rule formula. Okay, so the formula works. Always goes the bottom times the derivative of the top. The bottom is square root of x minus one, that would be your g, times the derivative of the top, that's your f prime. The derivative of x is one. Because there's a constant in front of that, that's a one x, so your derivative is always a constant. Minus the top, which is x, times the derivative of the bottom. Now the bottom one, we can write that uh, as x to the one half power minus one. So we'll write it that way. Uh, again, the square root can always be written as a one half power. So when we do that, we'll apply the power rule. The one half is going to come down, and then we subtract one from the exponent, and you get x to the negative one half. Derivative of negative one is going to be zero. The bottom one, we're going to square that one because your formula says g squared. It's always your bottom one squared. Now, just a matter of Clean that up. Top one, we're multiplying it by one, so just gonna be square root of x minus one, and that's all we can do there. Minus one half. And then, we're gonna add the powers of x. This is x to the first power, you're adding a negative one half to it, so when you add those together, you're gonna get x to the one half, which we can just turn that back into a square root of x again over the bottom one, square root of x minus one squared. We have some like terms that are here. There's a one square root of x and a minus one half there. So we can combine those together into a one half square root of x minus one. And we have this, square root of x minus one squared. And then in order to get rid of the double fractions here, what I'll do is I'm gonna multiply the top and bottom by two. That way I can clear out the fraction. I don't need to worry about that. So here would be my final answer. My derivative is going to be 2 times this will be square root of x minus 2. Don't forget to multiply this one also. And then don't forget there's also a 2 on the bottom as well because you're multiplying top and bottom by that. So then you get square root of x minus 1 inside. And you can leave it in the factor form or if you want to multiply it out, that's fine. Um, but this right here, that would be your derivative using the quotient rule. Okay, this problem is a little bit more complicated because we have a quotient and a product together. So, one way of doing this would be to do the product rule and then inside the product rule do a quotient rule. But instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get common denominators inside here first and then I'll multiply by x to the fourth then the whole problem will just turn into a quotient rule instead so we don't have to use both. So if there's ways that you can combine this first to make it easier, it's advised to do that first because it might save you a little bit less work in the long run. Okay, so we're gonna first, not gonna do the derivative yet, we're gonna first combine this together and get common uh, denominators. Okay, so for this I can do x to the fourth, I can do x plus one over x plus one, get them both to be common denominators, and then I'm going to work that out inside. In the bottom I'll just get x plus one, my common denominator. On top I can combine this together. x plus one minus two means that I get x minus one left. So this whole thing here I was able to combine together into this fraction. Then, this is the same thing as x to the fourth over one, and so then I can just multiply that out in the top, and I'll get x to the fifth minus x to the fourth, x plus one in the bottom. So I've taken it from this form all the way into here. Now this is the one I'm actually gonna work with when I take the derivative. My f is now gonna be this part on top, my g is gonna be the one uh, down below. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to go ahead and change this one since we went through all that work already. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to this x to the fifth minus x to the fourth over x plus one and now we'll proceed with the problem by using the quotient rule. Okay now we're ready for the quotient rule. Do that here so we have b primed. Okay so the top one's f the bottom one is g so I have the bottom one times the derivative of the top 
5x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. We applied the power rule for that one. So this is our g f primed. Got a minus sign minus the top x to the fifth minus x to the fourth. So we have the minus sign there times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is one. So g f primed minus f g primed. Okay, so we got the top parts done. We got the bottom x plus one squared. That's your g squared in the bottom. So again, we write the formula out. We got the bottom, drew the top. So g f primed minus g or f. And then this is g prime here. The bottom one is g squared. So again, labeling everything from the quotient rule formula. Next, we're going to multiply this out and then simplify it, get our answer. We're going to FOIL this. 5x to the fifth minus 4x to the fourth, and we'll do the inside one, it's plus 5x to the fourth minus 4x cubed. This one, since we're multiplying by one, we can just subtract these, minus, this is plus, so be careful about that sign change there. All this is going to be written over the bottom squared. The last thing that we'll do is we're just going to combine all the like terms together on top and that'll be our final answer. 5x to the fifth minus x to the fifth is 4x to the fifth. Then we have the fourth powers. Minus 4 plus 5 is 1 and then plus the 1 over here gives you 2x to the fourth. And the last term that we have is minus 4x to the third and then we just take that and write it over x plus 1 squared and then that's as far as you can go. You could factor this also you could pull out uh, 2x to the third there if you want, but otherwise this is okay to leave your answer in that form.